Oxford Biomedica. It's a really interesting company and uh, very unique in the fact that I think, you know, they combine gene therapy, they're in cell therapy, and, you know, a topic that you heard a lot about today, um, manufacturing. And we like to refer to them as like the lentiviral enablers, you know, in the gene therapy and cell therapy space. So we have their head of business development, Jason Slingsby, here today. He's going to give us an update on the company. Great. Thanks very much. Pleasure to be here. So I'm going to take you through uh, four or five slides on Oxford Biomedica and look forward to uh, discussion after. So just like to draw your attention to the disclaimer, we're a public company and I'll be making some uh, forward-looking statements. So um, we're actually in one of the older gene therapy companies uh, spun out of Oxford University 20 years ago. We now have 250 employees. Um, our share price is around uh, uh, 10 cents. Market caps, uh, uh, I think last Friday was $266 million. Uh, we did a, a relatively small financing back in February 2016. And key for us, and uh, we, we appreciate comments from our partners earlier on today, we have key strategic deals with both uh, Novartis and Sanofi. So we've got a, a shareholder base that's primarily uh, European focused. And uh, like a lot of uh, companies presenting at this meeting, we've had a run up in our share price over the last uh, two years or so. And we're pretty stable currently. So we have, like some other companies uh, in the AAV field, uh, we're, we're a lentiviral gene therapy company, but we have developed uh, products in three areas. Uh, CNS, I, uh, but also because lentiviral vectors integrate into cell types, we can work in the ex vivo space. And I think this is one of the key things we've seen in our portfolio in the last couple of years, increasing focus on, on ex vivo, which I'll go through. <clears throat> so, in CNS, uh, our lead program is called OXB102, which is a Parkinson's disease program. We use a lentiviral vector which has around a 9 kilo, uh, kilo base capacity to deliver three different enzymes that can do two things. Firstly, we can convert tyrosine, an amino acid available uh, in all cells, to dopamine. Uh, or we can additionally convert L-DOPA to dopamine. So uh, in comparison to some AAV approaches, we have two different routes uh, to create dopamine. Um, the aim here is not only to have better utilization of oral L-DOPA meds, but also to be able to generate some tonic levels of dopamine um, uh, uh, in the striatum. So we've already carried out a 15-patient uh, phase one study with OXB101, uh, which gave around, on average, a 30% improvement in the UPDRS part three uh, score. Uh, being an average, there were some patients that were significantly above that. So we are very, very encouraged by that. Um, we have published both one and three year follow-up data there. Uh, and there seem to be very durable uh, effects. OXB102 is an optimized version of OXB101, shuffling around the gene cassette, which uh, we have shown in primate studies, uh, including lots of imaging endpoints, uh, to be ten, uh, five to 10 times more productive than uh, the predecessor. So we will be starting a phase one, two for this program later on this year, and we're very convinced that by going up dose increments, we'll get to our uh, target uh, product profile uh, goal for efficacy. In the eye, we've completed uh, a wet AMD study in 21 patients, uh, delivering two genes with uh, anti-angiogenic effect, endostatin and angiostatin, and we'll be announcing in the next couple of months our development path forward for that program. We also have a corneal graft rejection program, uh, which is a, a very interesting approach using uh, the same vector as our wet AMD program, using endostatin and angiostatin to treat corneal plugs to prevent corneal graft rejection and neovascularization. 
Uh, corneal transplants are the most common organ transplants in the world, but there's around 10% of patients who uh, suffer neovascularization and rejection. And once you've rejected once, you reject more and more uh, aggressively. So this is a site-threatening indication. We've also conceived, developed, and brought into clinical development two orphan ophthalmology uh, uh, programs for Stargardt disease and Usher syndrome, and both were partnered with Sanofi, who are bringing them through phase one, two studies currently. And we are very keen to support our, our partner there. In the last couple of years, we've really moved into the ex vivo space. Uh, I'd like to first uh, talk about um, our own CAR-T program. We have a CAR-T program uh, focusing on a solid tumor antigen called 5T4. We've got in vivo proof of concept in this program uh, already. But more importantly, maybe we've got 15 years of experience with 5T4 which is a tumor-associated antigen found on all solid tumors apart from melanoma through a cancer vaccine program. What's also been referred to today uh, is our partnership with Novartis, whereby we manufacture the lentiviral vector both to support the CD19 targeting CTL019 program, and uh, this has driven a lot of the capex in the company um, but this uh, collaboration was also recently expanded to include a second target, which has not been uh, named. So uh, this is a, a very significant activity for us. Having been around for 20 years, uh, we've got a very broad and deep uh, IP estate, and we have an active program to partner uh, and license our IP to others. Um, we've also built up um, a deep know-how in the manufacturing and development of lentiviral vectors. I think historically some people have seen lentis as harder to make than AAV, um, and that may be true, but we've invested a lot to really lead the way in industrialization uh, of lentiviral manufacturing processes, and uh, we have licensed uh, know-how in, in that field. Um, we also clearly build in uh, composition and matter IP around our product portfolio, and we've given freedom to operate licenses to GSK in the field of ex vivo stem cell therapies using Lenti. So to kind of wrap up, uh, Oxford Biomedica have been around so long, we've been responsible for many of the firsts in the field. We were actually the first company in the world to deliver lentiviral vectors in vivo to man back in 2008. Uh, we're also the first to deliver Lenti to the back of the eye, where we think we have very nice uh, platform technology validation. And we're working with Novartis in the race to the first commercial product launch for a CAR-T product. We focus on CNS, ophthalmology, and ex vivo applications in cancer. We believe we're leading the way to bring lentiviral vectors uh, to the market. Um, we've announced to the markets previously around a 26 million pound investment in CapEx. We have three different GMP facilities just about an hour from London Heathrow, so please come and see us. And uh, focus here is currently a 200 litre serum free suspension process, which uh, works even better than lower scales. And uh, as everyone's talked about, lowering the cost of goods is ultimately vital to make uh, gene therapy not just a technical uh, reality, but commercial. And we're 250 people. We think we have the scale to actually uh, execute and de-risk programs. We believe in owning uh, the value chain and vertically integrating. Uh, we've got lots of regulatory experience, three INDs, four CTAs, and we've treated over 60 patients, uh, not including Sanofi and Novartis and uh, an, an ever-growing uh, uh, accumulated safety uh, patient database. Uh, and our revenues in 2015 uh, in the 18 to 19 million pound uh, region. Thanks very much. Great, thanks Jason. And, and you know, Oxford has so many interesting programs and we could talk for an hour about all the different things uh, that Oxford is doing. You know, I want to go back to the in vivo lenti, right? It's, it's, it's rare in the gene therapy space. It's, it's not talked about that often. 
you know, the difference between AAV and Lenti, obviously, you know, if you had a Lenti vector, you know, the trouble is getting it where you want it to go because integration into a non-mitotic or non-dividing cell, especially for CNS diseases, would be ideal. You know, can you talk about the differences in the in vivo approach with a Lenti versus AAV in, from competitors who have also shown compelling data in Parkinson's disease as well and why you think you know, Oxford's approach is, could be more successful. Sure, so I think both vector systems work. There's clinical validation. Uh, AAV has some uh, clear, excellent properties, and we've, we've seen some of that data uh, today from Voyager. Um, lentiviral vectors do have uh, about double the capacity. Um, we deliver, um, we, we believe it's interesting to aim to have tonic levels of dopamine from amino acids, as well as uh, enhancing oral meds. So you can't do that uh, if you have a smaller uh, capacity. Uh, traditionally seen lentiviral vectors have a low immunogenicity profile, and, and that is uh, beneficial. Uh, we can go into dividing and non-dividing cells, and if cells are dividing, progeny cells contain the vector. So for us, in the ex vivo space, uh, as, as other companies have referred to, stem cells, T cells, NK cells, B cells, DCs, they're all applicable to a lentiviral vector technology. Great, and, go and going back to the, the ProSaven data, which was, was, was really interesting in Parkinson's disease, um, I, I think you guys went back, you redesigned the vector, you have OXB 102, you went back preclinical to really ramp up dopamine, and, and that's what you were looking for. Can you tell us what you were seeing preclinically that you know, increases the probability of success of, ex of advancing 102 you know, as you're moving forward now? Sure, so um, OXB 101 was uh, called Pro7 and delivered three genes, AA, DC, TH, and the cofactor CH1. What we did was we realized that if we fuse two of those uh, enzymes together, uh, we actually have a pathway that seems to generate five to ten times the, the conversion uh, to dopamine than, than previously. So on a kind of per vector integration, we have the chance to go up five to tenfold. So we've tested that all in, in primates, uh, both in efficacy models and in extensive imaging studies, and this really gives us the confidence that we can go up uh, yeah, potentially five to tenfold uh, in human studies as what we've uh, achieved very promisingly already in, in our completed uh, phase one, two. Okay, and, and we only have a minute or two left, and I want to shift gears back to CAR-T. CAR-T has been a big topic today, especially on the manufacturing side. You're, you know, Oxford's going to play a very critical role for Novartis as they're likely to be the first to, to registration. You know, can you walk us through the terms of that deal, what the revenue could look like, milestones and royalties, and is Oxford taking steps now uh, that it appears that, you know, CAR-T is going to be approved in CD19 to expand manufacturing and be able to handle that or, or increase its capacity to meet the demands of the market? Sure, so our, our capex um, of approximately 26 million pound has uh, driven quadrupling of our GMP capacity and uh, we're, we're considering uh, further investment. Um, we have structured the deal with Novartis. Uh, headline value is $90 million uh, back in November 2014 with $14 million up front in, in equity and uh, up front. Um, we continue to own all IP relating to the Lenti Vector platform, but Novartis have an exclusive op uh, right to a rising IP in the field of CAR-T therapeutics. Um, we're incentivized to uh, increase yields and to bring on further capacity, and we indeed uh, uh, get a royalty on net sales. So it's clearly both a long-term value element for the company as well as short-term but we can also leverage all of that investment for our own CAR-T program, targeting 5T4, which is carved out of that relationship. 
Great, thank you. Uh, we're out of time, but you know, Oxford Biomedica, a big year for CAR-T. It's a big year for this company as well, and we're looking forward to seeing the progress, especially on the CAR-T front. And, okay. and the Thanks so much. Therapy. Thank you.